Good afternoon, everyone. Let us enter the presence of God. Please close your eyes. If you can. Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, we enter your holy presence this moment, my God. We are mortal men. We are sinners who were born into the world of sin. But Lord, you are the almighty God. You have all the powers, all the knowledge. You are present everywhere. There is no one and nothing in this world that can be compared to you. We ask you, Lord, to have mercy on us. Forgive our sins and our mistakes. And bless those who are participating in this service from their homes, from their offices, from the bus, wherever they will be watching from. May your Holy Spirit touch them. Remove their sicknesses, their pains, the misery, the depression. Remove their sadness, my name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you bless these families, my God where there is no unity. This mama is alone right now because the husband left her for another woman. During this lockdown, my God, he left. He took a younger woman. My Lord, may you make justice for this mama. And the justice is not to do something bad to the husband, but bring him back to his senses. Rebuke the spirit of the devil and set this family free. Let there be restoration, my God, in the name of Jesus. Say your prayers now, please. Talk to God. Ask him to bless your life today. Ask him to give you spiritual ears and understanding that you may understand what he wants to tell you today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my God, embrace your people. Hear their cries, my Father. And answer them today. Wipe away their tears. And let there be a total restoration in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise be to God. If you can, sit down please. I want you to watch this testimony. When we come back, I'm going to talk about it. And we will pray together. Take a look. These are results of faith. My name is Lynette Okiro. I live in Nairobi, Kenya. I'm an advocate by profession. Before coming to the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, my life was completely destroyed. I had just lost my job and had not been able to secure another one for a full one year. So I came to the church, I was completely down financially. Uh, my family had had disagreements and so we had not spoken for five years. My life was completely destroyed in terms of um, even my health. I came to the church when I, I had lifestyle diseases. I was hypertensive, I was borderline diabetic, um, my vision was failing. I was spiritually very down. I had gone to church, but I had no spiritual life at all. When I came to the church, I was introduced to the chains of prayer. And because my life was so destroyed, I decided to come to the church every day. And slowly, slowly, my life began to change. The first time I was introduced to the concept of sacrifice was one afternoon when I had attended a service and the pastor told us how important it was to honor God by giving him more and keeping less. And I remember I had something like $25. And that day I decided to give the 20 and remain with the five. And so this was my first experience uh, with sacrifice and it went on like that until it came to the campaign. I participated in several campaigns but the one that I remember clearly is one campaign where I decided to go all out. I had come with no money at all to the church but through my previous employment there was some money that I had put aside for investment for my retirement 
it was about uh, 1.3 million. And so when the campaign came, I decided to go all in and I put this money on the altar. The reason I decided to sacrifice this money that had been put aside for my retirement was because I came to the realization that I can only trust in God. I'd come to the church with trust issues and I didn't trust easily, but through the years as I was being taught uh, by, the, by the pastors every day as I attended the teachings and the chains of prayer, I came to realize that it's only God that I can trust. And so I went all out and I put this money that had been earmarked for my investment, for my retirement. The moment I placed my sacrifice on the altar, things began to change. I got a job that put me in touch with some of the top leaders in this country, a very fulfilling job where my contribution is appreciated. He built us a home as a family. We were united and he restored us to peace. He built a home that was more than 10 times the value of the sacrifice that I had placed on the altar. My health was also restored. I am still working on other aspects of my life, but one thing I've come to realize is that sacrifice is a very spiritual thing and sacrifice shows your trust in God, your faith to put in everything that you have on the altar, in the belief and in the knowledge that God will look after you. Lynette today is a very happy person, uh, peaceful. I no longer have all those anger issues, all the frustration, the bitterness that I had when I came to the church. Our family is restored. We are very united, very close. We have a beautiful home to go to. We gather there. Wherever, wherever we are in the world, we all come over December. We congregate there together. My health is great and I'm working on the other aspects of my life. I participate in each and every campaign as it comes. We have two campaigns each year. And every time I participate in a campaign, God takes me a step higher. I would advise you, if you're hesitating, to jump in and give God a chance to work a miracle in your life. I tested God and he came through for me. Thank you, Jesus. We are in the campaign of Israel. Campaign in, Israel. in the spirit of Gideon. Kwa imani ya Gideon. You are going to write your prayer request. Chini lako. And bring it to the altar. No kwa this month of July. Mwezi uwa July. And it will be taken to the valley of the revolted ones. Na bonde ya Just like Gideon who was a slave for seven years along with his people in the hands of the Midianites. His people were hiding in the caves. The hand of Midian was so strong against the Israelites. But when the angel of God came to Gideon, saying the Lord is with you, mighty warrior, Gideon unleashed his, re his revolt. He said, where are the miracles that our fathers told us about? If the Lord is with us, why are we living like this? This is the spirit we are passing to you now. Gideon was not questioning God. He was questioning the situation. He was rejecting the situation. This is what we have to do on the altar. If the Lord is with me, why is my husband going out with another woman? Why are my children on drugs? Why is my family destroyed? Why do I have an incurable disease? Then God will direct you what to do in order to change this situation. To Gideon, he said, go in this might of yours. And save Israel. Gideon said, how will I do it? My clan is the weakest in the tribe of Manasseh. 
I myself am the least in my family. Mimi ndio mdogo kwa family yangu. And God said, Na Mungu akasema, Take the second bull of your father. Chukua hiyo fali ya pili ya baba yako. Break Baal's altar that your father is using. Vunja madhabahu ya Baal ambayo baba yako anatumia. Make a sacrifice on the new altar that you are going to build. Fanya dhabiu kwa hii madhabahu mpya ambayo utatengeneza. When Gideon obeyed this, Gideon alipotii, the victory came. So what am I telling you now? Nakwambia nini sasa? God is not going to bring the blessing to you. Mungu atakuletea baraka. You just watched Lynette's testimony. Umetazama ushuhuda wa Lynette. God is not going to bring the victory to you. Mungu atakuletea ushindi mahali ulipo. God is not going to bring the solution to you. Mungu atakuletea solusho. God is going to give you instructions. Atakupatia maagizo. He is going to give you his word. Atakupa neno lake. Once you obey him, his word then you are going to have the victory you are going to have the strength you need you are going to have the solution you need utapata solution ambayo unahitaji your life will change maisha yako itabadilika but it all starts when we obey the voice of god yote inaanza tunapotii sauti ya mungu this is what gideon had to do ndio gideon ilibidi afanye when he did that alipofanya hivyo the bible says in the book of Judges chapter 6 verse 34 Biblia inasema katika kitabu cha waamuzi mlango wa 6 mstari wa 34 But the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon then he blew the trumpet and the Abizrites gathered behind him The spirit of the Lord roa Mungu came upon Gideon ilimkujia Gideon and gave him direction ikampatia mwelekezo after he had obeyed the direction of God baada ya kutii maelekezo ya Mungu after he had obeyed the word of God baada ya kutii neno la Mungu this is what i want you to understand today ndio ningependa uelewe leo your victory lies in your obedience to the word of God ushindi wako unapatikana kwa kuutifu wako kwa neno la Mungu only four let letters will change your life. Ni pekee ndo zitabadilisha maisha yako. Four letters will rewrite your history. Herufu nne zitabandika upya historia yako. O B E Y. O B E N Y. That is the, the letters that will change your life. Hizo ndo herufu ambazo zitabadilisha maisha yako. Obey in this campaign of israel katika kampeni hii ya israeli this campaign in the spirit of gideon hii kampeni ambayo tunaenda kwa imani ya gideon what is it that god wants you to do nini ambacho mungu anataka ufanye what kind of a sacrifice does god want you to make on the altar ni dhabi ugani ambao mungu anataka ufanye kwa madhabahu obey only that tio peke there are no many things hakuna mambo mengi we are talking to you who are crying this moment tunakuzungumzia wewe ambao wanalia wakati huu you whose husband left you for another woman wewe ambaye mume wako alikuacha kwa ajili ya mke mwingine your wife left you took the kids and took off because you are, you lost your job mke wako alikuacha alichukua watoto akaenda kwa sababu ulipoteza kazi you find yourself alone now unajipata sasa uko peke yako you who were diagnosed with an incurable disease ulipatikana na ugonjwa ambao una tiba The doctors told you categorically that there is nothing they can do for you anymore. Madaktari walikuambia ususe na kwamba kuna chochote unaweza kufanya au kusaidia zaidi. Wait for a miracle. Usubiri muujiza. Oh wait for your death. Ama ngojea kifo chako. And you don't know what to do. Na ujui la kufanya. You are the one who's supposed to come to the altar. Wewe ndio unafaa ukuje kwa madhabahu. The campaign of Israel is not for those who are well. Kampeni ya Israeli si wale ambao wako sawa. If you are okay with the way you live your life. Kama uko sawa na vile unaishi maisha yako. Let it pass. It's not for you. Acha ipite sio yako. If you are happy with your life. Kama umefurahishwa na maisha yako. It is not for you. Sio yako. We are calling those who have the rock bottom tunawaita wale ambao wamefika mwisho those who are between life and death wale ambao wako kati ya maisha na kifo those who need a miracle in their life wale ambao wanahitaji muujiza maishani mwao you know that whatever you have is not enough to change your situation unajua kwamba chochote ambacho uko nacho hakitoshi kubadilisha hali yako you need god's intervention in your life unahitaji mbaya alikuwa amechukizwa aliyeitwa gideoni what will god kizo wa mtu ambaye amekubali tu hali ilivyo that will determine your future hiyo ndio itathibitisha usoni yako you can sit down and cry unaweza kieti chini ulie you can keep grumbling and complaining unaweza endelea kunungunuka na kulalamika or you can go to the altar. Make your sacrifice. Fanya dhabiu lako. 
and change your life. This is what we want to do right now. I want to pray together with you. You who are tired of fighting alone. You want to hold the end of Jesus. And go with him. You want to fight together with him. You try it on your own. You use your knowledge, your experience, your intelligence. You used your influence. You used your money. You tried everything you could. But look at you. Still very much unhappy. Sad. Frustrated. frustrated and depressed. Go to the altar, my friend. Climb the altar. The altar is the place of meeting. Where we go up. And God comes down. We meet God on the altar. The altar changes the weak into strong ones. The small ones into great ones. Those who are in shame. The altar restores their lives. You have to come to the altar. Stand up please. Stretch your hands to your screen. To my hand. My Lord, from the altar, I bless these people right now. This person who doesn't know what to do anymore. They tried to use their money and failed. Their influence and failed. Their knowledge, their know-how, their experience and failed. Nothing in this world is enough to change this person's situation, my God. They are unhappy. They are frustrated. They are depressed and sad. They need your intervention, my God. This person has hit a dead end, a rock bottom. Whatever they have tried to do did not work. And there is only one option that Satan gives to them, suicide. But right now, my God, we are telling them there is no suicide but the altar. The option is the altar to come and lay their lives on the altar. Even this person who was about to take their lives, they were going to destroy it anyway. So they might as well put it on the altar. Give it to you, my Lord, because you have power to change this life. You have power to turn their sadness into victory, into glory, into peace, into joy. You have power to restore this person, my God, as you restored the Israelites through the fate of Gideon and the 300 men. So change the history of this person, my God. Wipe away their tears. Take away their shame and give them a new life through this campaign of Israel. Change this person's life, my God. Remove the heavy burden that has been on on their shoulders for many years. And give these people peace, my God. Answer their prayers in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lift up your hands, my friend. Invite the Holy Spirit to come upon your life. Tell God I will obey your voice. Just as Gideon did. And your spirit came upon him. I will obey my Lord. I will climb the altar. And sacrifice to you. Let your spirit come into my life. Oh, come, Holy Spirit, and fill me with your presence. Talk to God right now. Yes, go ahead. Invite the Spirit of God to come into your life.
oh my god let them receive the holy spirit let them receive your presence in this moment as they are seeking you my god pour your spirit upon their lives pour your spirit into their hearts my god strengthen this person who has always regarded himself as the weakest one this person who has no self-esteem this person who has no confidence come holy spirit and fill them right now with your presence hallelujah oh holy spirit renew your people's lives renew their souls my god revive their faith and give them your spirit your presence in the name of the lord jesus lift up your hands receive the spirit of god where you are receive the anointing of the holy spirit right now he fills you with his presence he renews your soul he renews your strength and he gives you salvation you who decided today that you are going to obey his voice you are going to follow his will he fills you with his spirit as he did with Gideon he anoints you now you who have been weak you who have been depressed no pleasure to live anymore receive a new life now the Holy Spirit gives you a new life. The Holy Spirit strengthens you. He gives you salvation. Lift up your hands. You can glorify Him now. Give glory to God. Give glory to the Lord with all your heart. Go ahead. He embraces you now and transforms your life. He makes you into a new person, a servant of God. Hallelujah. Receive peace now. Receive joy. Receive salvation. Receive strength. Receive faith that will change your life. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we glorify you. We worship you. 
We magnify your name, Lord. You are so great. You are so glorious. You deserve all the honor and the glory. Be praised. May your name be praised and glorified. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. The Spirit of God is with you. The Spirit of God has embraced you and given you a new life. Do not look behind. Do not worry about your yesterday. Leave the past in the past. Trust in God and move on. Approach the altar. Your solution is on the altar. It is not in the past. In the church. No, it is on the altar. Climb the altar. Present your sacrifice. Break the altar of Baal. If there is anything wrong you've been doing in your life, stop doing it. Stop completely. Break the altar of Baal. Break your ties with sin. That is the meaning of breaking the altar of Baal. Break your covenant with sin. And make a new covenant with the Lord Jesus on the altar. Through your sacrifice. In the campaign of Israel. We are going to finish our service now. Going to make the last prayer. But before this prayer. I want you to watch this video. It's talking about life after death. Every Wednesday, I'm going to show you one more. This is the first one. Next Wednesday, I will show you the second one. In total, there are seven. Take a moment and watch this video. Certainly, the greatest curiosity of man is what will happen to him after death. For centuries, man has been seeking answers to this matter. There are many books and movies which try to depict life after death. Theory which confuses the human race. Is it possible to know how our lives will be in eternity? You will follow these and other topics here on The Mysteries of Eternity. of eternity. On today's episode, who will come to fetch your soul? The Bible is full of revelations about life after death. The Lord Jesus was one who spoke most about it, giving in detail things that will happen after giving our last breath. Certainly, Jesus' most revealing discussion concerning eternity speaks of two men who had different destinations, the rich man and Lazarus. Who hasn't read or heard about them? But there are many secrets in this holy text that at times go unnoticed by many. And one of them is, So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Here, the Lord Jesus left it clear that when we die, someone will come to fetch our soul, either angels to take you to heaven or demons to take you to hell. But what determines who will be sent to fetch us? What determines is whom you are serving during your lifetime on earth. If a person chose to obey the word of God, deny his desires and his will for his love for Jesus, then he is the Lord of that soul. But on the contrary, if he preferred to live far from the will of God, 
fornication, addiction, grudges, lies, then automatically the devil becomes your Lord. Therefore, when the person dies, the Lord of that soul will come to fetch him. Every second, two people in the world die. Both the rich and the poor die. Both the famous and the unknown die. The young and the old die. People die of old age. Others die from sicknesses, while others die from disasters. The problem is not to die, nor the manner in which death comes. The problem is, who will fetch your soul? Whom have you been serving in your lifetime? Who is the Lord of your soul? Imagine the joy of seeing angels on your side ready to take you to meet the Lord in the air. However, imagine the despair of those who didn't believe and who chose to live according to their desires and sins when they come across demons to take their souls to hell. And if they don't make a pact with the big man, I will take them. They don't know that when the body detaches from the soul, that they carry on with their skeleton, I will come to get them. There are people who didn't believe you exist, but during a time of death they see you. People who said that you are what fanatics of the Bible believe, but they see you. What is their reaction when they see you? <laughs> and that's where eternity starts, either with God or without Him. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you, then whose will those things be which you have provided? If you pass away now, who will come to fetch you? Next episode. It is said that we take nothing with us when we die. However, there are three things that a person takes with him after death. Think very well about this. Who will fetch your soul? Will it be the demons or the angels? What will be the destiny of your soul? Will it be hell or heaven? You make that decision. There is nothing that can be done after you die. All the decisions we take while we are still alive. Take a decision today to surrender your life to Christ. To walk with him. To do his will. You will be saved. These bodies that we are in are temporary. This body is not me. It is just a casing that is carrying me. I am actually the soul inside this body. When this body dies, when it stops working, my soul will continue outside this body. This is what many people don't understand. A soul is eternal. There is no death for souls. It's the body that dies. The body has an expiry date. But your soul will continue. Outside this body, either in hell, Either ni kule kuzimo, or in heaven. Ama bingoni. Make a decision now. Fanya wamozi sasa. Let's make our last prayer. Fanya wamletu la muisho. Close your eyes. Funga macho. Our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we take a decision right now to walk in your ways, to do what is right in your eyes, to obey your voice. My Lord and my God, 
We don't want to perish when we reach the end of our journey. The body will go back to the dust where it came from and rot. But our souls will continue, my Lord, for eternity. Therefore, we surrender to you our lives. Forgive our sins and our mistakes. Forgive, my God, our carelessness. The times that we followed the will of our flesh, the burden of this world, and forgot about yours. Receive our souls, my God, and give us salvation, we pray. Talk to God right now. Say a short prayer and lay your life in his hands. In the name of Jesus. salvation my father for the glory and the honor of your name in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we thank you Lord we thank you for this opportunity to know what we know the opportunity to know you we thank you for your salvation for your word for your spirit my Lord have mercy on those who are crying out to you those who are humbling themselves before you, give them grace, my Lord, and save their souls in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. We, are, we have come to an end of our service. Next, son, next Wednesday, we are going to bring another video for you. Many people say, you carry nothing when you die. We are going to tell you that there are three things that you are going to carry with you. You will hear next Wednesday, what are those three things that you carry with you when you die? And this Sunday is going to be the Sunday of the blowing of the trumpet. We are blowing the trumpets. We are calling the warriors. Those who want to be one of the 300. If you say I am one of the 300 so this coming Sunday join our services online. Eight o'clock in the morning. Sambili ya subui. And ten o'clock in the morning. Na sanne ya subui. And the last one will be twelve midday. Ya mwisho ni sasita mchana. We are going to blow the trumpet. Tuta polize tarumbeta. We are going to call you to climb the altar. Tuta kuita upande kwa madhabao. Our services are on Kenya UCKG. Zinapatikana kwa Kenya UCKG. Both on Facebook and YouTube. Kwa mtandao wa Facebook na mtandao wa YouTube. You can also follow in my page Gerald Nkai. Pia katika ukurasa wa Facebook wa Askofu. Wherever you can watch us watch but send the links to your friends, to your relatives, to your family members. Popote unaweza tazama tazama lakini tumia familia, jamaa, marafiki hiyo link. Join us in faith. Ungana nasi kwa imani. Take now the bank details of the church from your screen. Going to sing a song quickly while you are taking down the bank details. For you to give your offerings to God. To give your tithes to God. You can take the details now. Wewe ni Mungu yote. Hakuna
Let's make our last prayer. Lift up your right hand. May the Lord our God keep you and guard you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and have mercy on you. May the Lord our God give you peace tonight, tomorrow, and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise be to God. Have a good evening. Before coming to the church, I was a different person. Today, I'm a successful businessman and um, committed Christian. But before that, I, I could say I was religious. I had a lot of insecurity. I believed in God, but I wasn't really sure of anything at all. I wasn't sure of myself. I wasn't sure about the ways of God. I wasn't sure about anything. I was very confused. Then I heard about the tithes, that when I give tithes, you know, the devourer will be rebuked and it shows that I'm putting God first. I wanted to see the power of God in my life. And that has really helped me because I now had passion. And that passion was passion to do the will of God. Because my life is already with God. My life is already on the altar. And if my life is on the altar and God has given me everything, it was, I would say it was even a good thing that when I came to the church, I had nothing. So it means that everything I have today is because of my faith in God. And I can tell you that because there are different challenges I went through that it was only a miracle that God took me out of it. There are situations where that I'm faced with and I think, wow, how am I going to get out of this now? And miraculously, God takes me out of that situation. The first thing we saw was my son, he had asthma and he was healed because before that it was really troubling because when he got the attack, he had to go into hospital and all that and he was healed. And I thought, wow, I'm going to continue putting this to the test. I'm always saying, God, show me what I need to do. And I tell you, I, from what I see is that we are renewed every day in my household. My son, he is also serving God. He's, he's doing very well. He's, um, he's an assistant in the church as well. My wife is also an assistant. I'm an assistant. This is the life we live. We live a life of sacrifice, a life of doing, fighting to please God, fighting to do the will of God. And as I say, God has given us true joy, true peace, true happiness has come from God and is living from faith to faith. Today, you know, as I say, we have, we, we really have the best, you know, we, we have the best, we have businesses, we have properties, we have nice cars. What I used to earn a year, easily I give the tithes of what I used to earn, easily. A year's wage, now it's a tithe from time to time, very easy. It's, a, it's an amazing life to follow God, but most importantly is to be in the presence of God and tell people about what this God can do in their lives.